subscriber of mine sent me to a pair of honest questions for feminists. I figured I'd give them a go, see how I'd answer them. Question part A. Does a male to female transition lose male privilege and or toxicity? If so, by what mechanism? If not, why? Part B. Does a female to male transition acquire male privilege and or toxicity? If so, what is the mechanism? If not, why? Societal biases are imposed on people, surprisingly, by how those individuals appear to be when viewed by society. If a society gives a group advantages or disadvantages based on stereotypes or biases, race, sex, gender, religion, class, etc., then when a person appears to be a member of that group, they will receive the advantages and disadvantages of that group. <laughs> Very funny. Any biases that humans have are given by humans, not bestowed by the universe itself. Everybody has a gender presentation, but people should not be denigrated because of it, especially if it deviates from the norm. I assume that everyone has read John Howard Griffin's Black Like Me. Fair point. I assume that everyone is familiar with Griffin's Black Like Me. In it, he recounts changing his skin color, going from a white to a black man, and recording how society viewed him with only a cosmetic change. For those of you who haven't read it, this was the 1950s, so it won't be much of a spoiler to say, not well. But the changes in attitudes towards him were simply because of how he was viewed by others. The UV light used to change his complexion didn't add or remove any intrinsic value he would have as a person, or what he could give to society, just what he looked like. And society said, a person looking like this should be treated a certain way. In the same vein, when a transgender person is able to adjust their body to match their preferred gender identity, they will, hopefully, be perceived as the gender they associate with. This would mean that society would judge them simply on how they are perceived, not how they were born. When they are seen as one sex, they are treated one way. When they are seen as another, they are treated a different way. And this is just a guess, but my hunch would be that most people who transition from one sex to another would be less toxic because they have lived life as both sexes and are more understanding of what both experience. I say most, not all, because some people can be jerks no matter what they've gone through. For this question, I'm only using objective basis, not subjective basis. The objective basis for gender is the sexual chromosomes that every person possesses. First off, I'm not sure if you're being deliberately dishonest or making an honest mistake. I'll lean towards the latter and give you the benefit of the doubt. This is very similar to people who try to use the second law of thermodynamics to disprove evolution, a simplification of a concept leading them to a major misunderstanding. The question of someone's gender identity cannot be an objective one because, by definition, a person's gender is how they perceive themselves, making it a subjective view. I agree that trying to be objective is better than being subjective when determining things, but sometimes it's just not possible. It would be like trying to objectively state which is better, chocolate cake or apple pie. That's true, but I can't prove it objectively. My perception is that cake just tastes better than pie. In the same way, a person's perceptions of themselves, including their gender, is a subjective view. But let's see where he goes with this. Question. Given that 99.9% .9 plus persons who possess the sexual chromosomes X plus X are born female, with vaginas, and that 99.9% .9 plus persons born with an X chromosome and a Y chromosome are born male with a penis. What is the objective basis for a third gender, otherwise known as non-binary? Well, I don't see how this is a question for feminists more of one for transgender and genderqueer activists and those who have an interest in gender variant issues. But maybe the problem's on my end, so let's try to answer this. Just because you were born with sexual characteristics like a penis or vagina, that doesn't mean your gender will match that of your genitals. Gender is a mental state. Even the American Psychological Association understands that gender is not necessarily going to align with a person's physical sex. Yes, that's true. 
In the past, if someone didn't conform to what was expected based on external characteristics, it used to be thought that person was suffering from mental illness. But the APA has updated their understanding of both human sexuality and gender. That's the great thing about science, even a soft science like psychology. Science may not always be right, but it's self-correcting to become more right as time goes by. Uh, that's actually a bad musical cue. That song is about how things don't change over time. Our knowledge and scientific understanding is constantly updating. A chromosome pairing will not always match the traditional norms of external sexual standards. Other variables, along with chromosome imbalance, can determine the gender, but not the sex of a person. A major factor is assumed to be the amount of testosterone and estrogen that a fetus receives in utero. If, for whatever reason, a fetus receives developmental chemicals in an amount outside the norm, too much or not enough, they may not develop the standard gender identity in alignment with their genital structures they were born with, either identifying as the opposite gender from their biological sex, or somewhere in between. For example, there are people who have an XX chromosome pairing who have congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which means they developed high levels of hormones in utero and developed masculine characteristics. Additionally, there are those with an XY chromosome pairing who have androgen insensitive syndrome, so they don't respond to male hormones and did not develop male characteristics. The bed nucleus of the strata terminals, a brain structure that is part of sexual behavior, is more likely to align with the gender a person identifies with and not always with what matches their external sexual characteristics. That is, a person who identifies their gender as a man will have a brain structure similar to that of a cisgender person whose sex is male. And a person who identifies their gender as a woman will have a brain structure that matches that of someone whose sex is female. I've mentioned this before in my evolution videos, the human body is incredibly complex and, with any complex mechanism like us, especially ones where mutations are features and not bugs, it will not always develop as expected. There can, and usually will be, differences that fall outside the norm. And yes, you are correct that in the vast majority of cases, someone with a penis will identify as a man, and someone with a vagina will identify as a woman. One of my viewers pointed out in a past video that some extreme trans rights folks say it's wrong to even say that a newborn is a boy or a girl. But, since a child's gender will most likely match their sex, making that assumption is understandable. We just need to accept that such a diagnosis could be wrong, since it's based on visual cues and not a deeper understanding of their personality. I'm not sure where you got your numbers from, but they seem to match within half a percentage point to what has been recorded. In the United States, only about 0.6% of the population admit to falling outside normal gender lines. But that's still almost a million and a half people. That's only slightly more than the entire population of San Diego. San Diego. Which of course in German means a whale's vagina. Yes, compared to the rest of the population, the percentage may be small, but they still exist, and you can't dismiss the experiences and outlook of such a large number of people. The objective bias for non-binary existence is that it's been studied and recorded. While it's a small minority, that doesn't mean they don't exist or should be denigrated for falling outside traditional norms. To say that simply being a tiny percentage of the population means that they should not be treated with dignity and their personal views about themselves not falling to binary gender norms should be dismissed is essentially the same as saying, well, go fuck yourself, San Diego. Turn the tables with